Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a very interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Black Snow Customs Production Mini Opiate. It was actually made by Riot exclusively for CutFJ.com or Cut Fine Jewelry, I believe. I just spoke with Matt uh, over there, super nice guy. Uh, I'm gonna link uh, the retailer right down below. Of course, they have jewelry, but they also have knives, which is kind of, I mean, that kind of does go hand in hand. Um, but that's where this came from. Now, uh, before you proceed with this video, I want you to know these are gone. They were limited production, they were exclusive. So I'm gonna be talking about a knife today that you currently cannot get unless you go to the secondary market, but that's, not an unfamiliar type of thing for this channel. That's something that we do all the time. I still want to talk about this because this is a rare bird. <laughs> this is like, this exists almost nowhere on YouTube. So interesting. That's why I called in to get some details. Matt was very nice and gave me all of the information. Uh, they do, they, they definitely do other exclusives, right? So make sure you check them out. Thanks so much to the gentleman who sent this in uh, for me to review. This was sent by a viewer and it will go back to him when I am done. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. There's a link for Patreon down below and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I'm gonna be real honest with you guys right up front here. I personally very much like how this looks. This is the type of knife that I would look at and go, I do not care if there are, you know, if I'm going to have ergonomic criticisms or think, because believe me, I have some ergonomic criticisms for this, right? Um, I have, a, I actually have a lot of uh, criticisms a as a reviewer, but I personally very much love how this knife looks. And that's something that is very conflicting when you are a reviewer. I have to separate that part of me that is an extreme knife enthusiast. And I sometimes I just like how things look. I have to separate that and make sure and give fair and honest criticism. So I'm going to attempt to do that today. Let's go ahead and get uh, an overall measurement of the production mini opiate. It's actually shorter than it looks. It's just shy, just shy of eight inches, 7.85 inches overall. The total blade length is about, I mean, depending on where you measure it, right? I'm gonna say it's about three and a quarter. No, that's wrong. It's about three and a half. I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize for my stupidity. <laughs> the cutting edge is three and an eighth. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. You can see here that, yeah, while it is shorter than the Rat 1, uh, this obviously has a lot of presence. Uh, this is a big item. It's a big object. It's going to take up some room, right? How about some uh, other size comparisons up against the Spyderco Para, a PM2, sorry, and the Spyderco Para 3. This is in between for sure. Uh, last but not least, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue and uh, the Benchmade Bug Out in between. Uh, this has that uh, cleavery style blade, but it does it in a way that is not obnoxious and just sort of on trend. You know what I mean? Where it's like every company released a cleaver blade a while back. If you've ever looked up Black Snow Customs, I think Jason Momoa owns a couple of Black Snow Customs. For those of you who have seen that reel on Instagram, if you didn't know, Jason Momoa is a knife guy. I just, I found it out through the reel. I thought it was hilarious that he had ordered, somebody turned him on to Black Snow Customs and he ordered a couple. I just, I just love, I love seeing that. I love finding out that celebrities are knife enthusiasts. So anyway, there's some fun little information for you there. These are the same people, but I looked at this and thought, this definitely looks different. This has more character. This is more interesting than just like the, you know, the whoever, whatever, cleaver. Like, look at us. We got a cleaver, too. We made us a tactical. It's a tactical cleaver because it's got, uh, uh, there's holes in it. Yeah, and there's a flipper. Ta like, <laughs> great. Um, this has a little bit more character, which is cool. I like that. I'm not going to say that this cleavery style blade shape really offers that much advantage. But it's clear to me that the designer of this knife was not like, I'm going to, I'm seeking out to create the most utilitarian, most ergonomic, uh, most ergonomically advantageous design ever. No, this was kind of like, I just like how this looks and I'm going to design something that will work as a folding pocket cutting apparatus, right? 
Um, so how's the action? <laughs> Shut up, Complex. Oh, the action's freaking crazy. Wow, the action is spectacular. Now I have uh, definitely handled Riot knives. This knife does not have a double clutch. I'm just testing. You see what I'm doing there? I'm testing how, how far back can I get my thumb to disengage this? I mean, you can see the scallop right here where they intend for you to do that, right? Now, if I do it right up at the top, that detent ball is real close. It doesn't make it right here, right there. The detent ball passes over, right? So you can turn it, well, I didn't. That was a bad example. You can, you should be able to, oh no, is there a sec, it's on the ramp. Oh, that's why, <laughs> that's a good thing I caught myself. I was about to be like, um, this is why, ladies and gentlemen, as you can observe, uh, I, I am a professional. No, um, the ball, <laughs> the ball was still on the ramp. So here, it needs to pass. So normally what I like to do with a flipper is, you know, do that and turn and let it close. Fortunately, it does have a little bit of a choil here to land on your finger, but that zone where you are, pat because if you leave it here and come in contact with the flipper tab, guess what? Double clutch. You move it down, eh, you might just barely catch that little open space, but too far down and you're catching blade, right? This is one of those knives where you're probably gonna wanna turn it sideways, do that, because honestly, there's a bit of double clutch and getting around that flipper tab with one hand, getting your thumb around that flipper tab with one hand requires you to be in exactly the right spot to get it to connect here, even though it looks like there's a lot of space, right? Right up against there. If my thumb is right up against there and just barely passing it, guess what part of that comes down on your thumb? Right there. Look how little, look how little room you have. So, something to consider if you're going to hunt this down in the secondary market, but wow, the action is seriously crazy smooth. And I think that's a combination of the fact that we have a blade that is very heavily weighted out here. And then we're also obviously dealing with Riot's fantastic overall quality control, right? That's just the way that it is. If you're not familiar with Riot, they make knives out of China, but they make some of the highest quality production knives on earth. Yes, even higher quality than a lot of US production companies. In fact, I'd say in a lot of ways, it's kind of head and shoulder, right? Right. It's just, it's general competition in China and other countries. They just kind of make the best that, you, there's gonna be a heavier price tag associated with this stuff versus other things that people would consider to be in the same general caliber or tier. Wow, he's long-winded today, isn't he? Yes, he is. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check on this guy. I'm gonna get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. I'm trying to be careful so as not to scratch that pivot. This is T8 for the pivot. The uh, scales, uh, the scale screws that are holding the scale to the frame are also T8. You all, um, certainly have more screws underneath here. They could be T6 or T8. Just know you're gonna be dealing with four extra screws outside of what I normally consider to be minimal hardware on this channel, which is just four total body screws. You know what? No, I'm no, I'm right. There's the two screws underneath there. And then you'll have a hidden screw uh, for the pocket clip, which is actually, they're right there. You can see them. I imagine those are T6. Not that big of a deal. As long as you have quality tools and a place to put your hardware, you'll be good to go. Um, let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. Uh, we didn't do carry profile, did we? We will. <laughs> blade stock thickness on this guy coming in at 150,000, oh, 149.5 thousand, no, 150 thousandths is what we're looking at there. Fairly thick, uh, length and height up against the PM2 and para three. We have a pretty, we, we got a booty heavy boy here, right? Um, this part of the blade is very tall and it's continuously tall, right? This is a tall object. It's going to take up more. It's going to be more bulky, right? And your thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3, you better believe it's thick, right? It's gonna take, it's also a bit bricky. Um, so just keep all of that in mind. There's no way that somebody who's been used to carrying the Para 3 is going to suddenly put this in their pocket and go, yeah, feels exactly the same, right? relative. So if you've been carrying the Cold Steel 4 Max, which believe me, people who carry the Cold Steel 4 Max, they will tell you. You will not have to ask if that thing is in their pocket. They will tell you. They will run 80 yards to you while your back is turned to let you know that they're carrying the 4 Max. Don't believe me? Look in my comments section underneath videos that are completely and totally irrelevant. Thank you Cold Steel 4 Max owners. We know. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god! What is it with cold steel people? I like cold steel knives. Jeez! What is it with you guys? You guys are wacky, man. Um, anyways. <laughs> what the heck am I talking about? Wait. What are we looking at for materials? RWL 34. That's not a super steel. I like RWL 34. Named after Robert Loveless, right? Famous name for sure. Good composition, very similar to 154CM, which is definitely a blade steel that we see on less expensive knives, but it's also a blade steel that we see on custom knives. And before you start, you know, categorizing different steels in this relative territory into premium or non-premium, remember, you can get 20 CV blades for under a hundred bucks now, folks. So that kind of, kind of is going out the window. Obviously, I don't want OS 8 on my expensive knives, but 154CM is not in the same caliber as OS 8. I am sure that I just stirred up a bunch of unnecessary arguments in my comments section. The weight on this guy is 5.15 ounces, which is pretty freaking heavy. Uh, the balance on this... <laughs> You know what's funny? <laughs> the blade is so heavy that the balance is actually really good. So while the ratios are not, usually when I see something that's way off on like, you know, if you go by the whole ounce and inch rule, right? Uh, an ounce of weight to an inch of blade. Usually when it's way off, because this is way off at only three and a half inches of blade, usually the balance is also goofy, but because we have so much material out here at the tip, the thing is pretty freaking balanced, right? Uh, so there you go. Okay, it took 11 and a half minutes because I couldn't stop cracking jokes and everything to get through specs. Let's talk about this thing. Right off the bat, I got to say this, uh, beautiful. The whole knife has a theme to it. All the lines match, the hardware matches, everything looks like it was very intentionally placed, right? It's not like Wii's new stuff where they're like, we went out of our way to make this really beautiful design and then we slapped this generic clip on it that we put on everything. No, the angles, everything, all the lines, all the angles, all everything looks like it goes, like everything was carefully selected. That being said, the ergonomics on this thing are atrocious. Oh God, the angle of the flipper tab, right? These incredibly sharp 90 degree angles. I mean, these scales are contoured, but then it's like you come right to the edge and it's just like, just an aggressive drop off, right? There is no comfortable way to hold. You're holding it like this, you're getting, not even, you're getting three and a half fingers on there if your hands are the same size as mine. Your index finger is gonna be uh, aggressively being pushed into the angle of this. Even when you're choked up here, this is a very sharp corner and you're feeling the angles of this, this, and this. The pocket clip is ridiculous. It is very sharp, it is very long, and it is not comfortable. There is not a comfortable way to hold this knife. And that's the first, that was the first issue in my own mind, I was like, wow, I love how this looks. I love it, but I hate how it feels in my hand. And sometimes that's gonna happen. And if you're watching this video right now, there's a good chance that you yourself are a knife enthusiast and you'll know, you'll say, that has not stopped me in the past. And I'm gonna tell you, me neither. <laughs> There are definitely knives out there that I've gone, wow, that really sucks in the hand, but I really like it and I'm going to buy it anyway. So let's just keep this in mind. If you really, really love something and you feel like it'll bring you happiness, right? It does not have to fit into somebody else's mold of a good knife. You can ignore whoever you want and buy whatever you want for whatever reason you want to. My personal collection has knives in it that consist of incredibly utilitarian designs that are just perfectly suited for the human hand. And then I have knives that wouldn't fit in an octopus, like an octopus wearing gloves, you know, like, or, or uh, like, a man who, instead of hands, has pine cones and, and you know, so, some other ridiculous, they like Lego hands, right? You're like, whose hands are these made for? I, I collect stuff like that, right? Because it's not, I don't have, it doesn't have to be perfectly ergonomic. So keep that in mind. But, you know, for those wondering, the ergonomics on this are not good. Whether you are choked up or you're choked back, they are not good. <laughs> <laughs> Access to the actual liner lock itself is pretty good. Is it, it might be my imagination, but it looks like maybe it's raised ever so slightly. No, I don't think so. I think it's perfectly flush. You can still get in there because they've scalloped it out. The action's wonderful, and the the detail and the uh, flipping action are also great. This little area right here is actually pretty nice, and because this area right here is flat and jimped 
push buttoning it is pretty perfect, honestly. This is one of those knives where once you get it going, I don't think you can fail it. No, I don't think you can. Because the detent is heavy enough that once you break the blade away from it, that weight that's being slung out by all this material out here, it's just gonna, it's gonna follow through into the lock position. It's just going to. I think the choil should have been quite a bit bigger, right? I also think that it probably should have had some jimping up here to just, I don't know, complement the lock-in position here, but it's not, so whatever. You have a cleavery style blade shape that definitely still has a bit of a tip, not much. You're not gonna be doing much, you know, you're not gonna be piercing much with this, right? If you're like, I'm a professional piercer, I pierce all day. Well, this isn't gonna be the best tool, right? For your occupation, whatever that is. Um, the uh, actual cutting performance of it though, the cutting down to the edge is not, I mean, it, it's definitely not the thinnest blade that I've ever seen in my entire life, but does it get fairly thin? Yeah, it gets okay. And the cutting edge is done well, right? There's also nothing in the cutting path. If you're gonna slice with this, it's gonna do it. For people wondering about food prep, uh, no, it's not gonna work because here's a flat surface, right? Here's your flipper tab and you can see the part of the blade where it actually connects to the surface. And this is also a piece of cardboard. Uh, if you are getting the handle dropping off the edge of your table, then it's going to connect in the middle. But if you wanna lay this whole thing down on the table, it doesn't connect till the later 30%, the final 30% of the blade. So no, um, we don't want if a folding food prep, a food prep knife is going to be one that does not have, it's going to be a, you would want the initial part of the blade to lay so you can do the kind of rocking chops or things like that, right? Like a kitchen knife, like look how your kitchen knife works, right? The edge of it can, it come, you can fall off the back of the table and just chop, chop, chop. So no, I wouldn't say, uh, will it, can you force it into a, a certain roll? Well, sure. People do that with pocket knives all the time. You can absolutely do that. Pretty strong blade shape. Not likely you're going to snap any tips here, but then again, don't do anything stupid with your knife. Use it like a knife, not a screwdriver, a pry bar, or hammer. Um, I would recommend a screwdriver, pry bar, or hammer for the tasks that correlate to the name of the tool. Uh, there is a flat that carries out 95, 90% of the blade, right? That's right here. Uh, pl obviously plenty of thickness, right? Um, RWL 34 is, like I said, it's, uh, I believe it performs almost, it's going to perform almost identically to 154 CM. You will not hear a lot of bad reports, uh, people using 154 CM. I love, I love this steel or steels like it. Very easy to touch up. Uh, will take a very fine edge and it'll hold it for a reasonable amount of, amount of time. It's pretty tough and it's also stainless. Pretty good. What is our, what is it? 154? Is it 14 to maybe it's 16% chromium? I can't remember. I also can't remember the carbon content, but it's good. I like this stuff. I like the finish on the blade. I'm really happy that we didn't go with a typical belt satin or even hand rub satin finish on this. It's just a nice, clean, semi reflective tumbled finish and it looks good. Right, like the pivot hardware. Um, I I just I really like the shape. I don't know what it is about this this belly and this transition to the choil and then this transition to this curvature. I normally don't like curvatures like this in a handle, but for some reason it just looks cool. I I can't put my finger on it exactly. It's just so weird and so different. Right, the curvature of it. It's not a typical just straight handled like meat folding meat cleaver looking thing. Right, it's a little bit more fancy. Right. It's kind of like how, uh, you know, we've got um, your over-the-top muscle cars, right? You got your Dodge, now I, I drive a Ram, right? So I'm not trying to insult this. But it's like the typical cleaver style blades, like if those are the aggressive like Dodge, you know, Dodge uh, vehicles like the Charger Challenger or the, or the Ram, right? And then you have your exotic, like your, your kind of super crazy, you got your Koenig SIGs and you got your... Uh, uh, What's another freaking crazy one? Your McLarens and blah, I don't know, whatever. Car people are going to be like, shut up, amateur. You don't know. And then you kind of have your in-between stuff, right? This is still in the exotic. Now, this is still favoring, favoring heavy. Okay, if we're going to take like a Dodge Challenger and turn it into an exotic car, it would probably be a uh, Bugatti uh, Chiron or Veyron or whatever Bugatti's newest thing is, right? That's like the, the exotic the muscle car of the exotic world. That's kind of what this makes me think of. I'm sure that I'm, 
somewhat alone in that thought process. That's just kind of how it goes for me. We have a uh, titanium backspacer that's nice and flush with the uh, liners here. Nice, big, thick. I, I like that this is a titanium liner lock, um, but big, thick titanium liners makes me feel good about it, at least in, you know, in my inner my inner stupid caveman brain that goes, yes, thicker material means stronger material. Yes, perfect logic in that. Um, you know, when, <laughs> again, it's only going to be as strong as the relief cut. People looking down at their gigantically thick titanium frame locks right now and going, no, no, it's so thick. It must be powerful. And then you look at the relief cut and it's like this big. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's only as strong as the re relief cut there, guys. Here come the cold steel guys. That's why you buy the triad lock. They just ran 80 yards over here to tell us that. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm sorry. Let's get back to this. Oh, no. There's no lanyard hole, but there is a lanyard bar. So there you go, lanyard people. The pocket clip, actually the depth, uh, the carry depth will allow you to, um, uh, you know, kind of keep this big triangle from sticking out of your pants, right? Um, but it's not going to stop the knife from carrying wide and large. Uh, this is one of those pocket. Well, I don't know. I don't understand people who carry other things in their knife pocket besides their knife. Right? I think you're carrying too much stuff if that's the case, right? Um, my knife pocket is always reserved for just my knife. It doesn't matter if it's the bug out or something like this, right? It's just going to be the knife. In any case, you will notice this. This is going to take up a lot of room. This pocket clip is way too long. It is way too sharp. This is way too pointy. And this bill, the extension of this bill is far too long. Take the entire thing and just crunch it, right? And then knock these corners down. Like it's already, this is already very uncomfortable. And again, this is silly. I'm critiquing something that has already sold, right? So Black Snow Customs could be watching going, mm-hmm, ooh, please tell us how to sell this metal complex. We have no idea how to do it. Obviously, <laughs> obviously they do because it's sold, it's gone, right? I'm just saying like I have, I, you know, this is part of me now. I have to critique these things. This pocket clip is too long. It's freaking crazy. And it causes an issue ergonomically, right? That is compounded by the fact that we already have really not great ergonomics. But again, if you change those ergonomic lines, you change the aesthetic of the design, right? So it's kind of a thing where it's like I'm critiquing something and the designer's like, look, I maybe he's like, look, I get it. I'm imagining a scenario where the designer's actually watching this review, which is likely not going to be the case. I get it, guy. I get it, YouTube guy, but that's not what I wanted to make. I wanted to make something that looked like this, and it just happened to, you know, come out in a way that uh, wasn't very comfortable. I think, um, you know, heavier chamfering here could help that. Knocking down the corners on this pocket, on this uh, flipper tab, could definitely help that, and definitely shrinking up this, scrunching down this pocket clip and making it less pointy. And you could probably keep a lot of the ergonomic lines, and I think that would really help. I also don't think the scales need to be this thick. That's kind of insane, right? So I don't know. That's my take. Now all of that's kind of up and down. You can think however you want about that. I got one major gripe with this guy. Oh wait, we didn't talk about here. Sorry. Here's the stop pin. It's real deep in there. Some shouldering, right? We have um, a steel lock bar insert here. No milling. Imagine that. Steel lock bar insert. Can we see it? Right there. You don't need an over travel stop because there's scales, right? Uh, there is no blade play up, down, left, or right. I've honestly never felt a Riot that had blade play. No pivot lash. Nice and smooth. Good detent. Kind of a thud, but good detent. And it's perfectly centered. I'm going to wipe this off while I talk. Here's my biggest issue with this guy. <laughs> and again, it's like, is it a problem? Because it's sold. Well, I don't know. I'm just going to power through. <laughs> um, they wanted 400 bucks for this. Now, a lot of people are going to go, $400, it's just titanium and micarta and RWL 34. If you are incapable of seeing past materials as value, boy, it's going to be a confusing and frustrating road for you in the knife world, right? You got to get around that. Riot does produce knives at a level that is a half to a full step up from its general competition. It just does. Anybody who has handled a crap load of knives and then they go handle a Riot, 
even some of their worst designs, they go, oh, wow, yeah, this is actually, you can feel it, right? Now, that being said, even though I can feel that sort of Riyadh essence in this knife, right? The action and the flip, but all the little dialed in things that make a knife operate the way that it should operate. And then little things like fitment and seating of the hardware, the finish, right? The angles and things, making sure that all the lines meet up. The design is what makes this thing angular, not a literal cutting of corners from the manufacturer. What was I saying? It was, was culminating. My culmination took too long and I, <laughs> I was monologuing like a villain. That's when you get punched in the face by the superhero you thought you knocked out earlier in the movie. Yeah, that being said, with Riot's execution here, this is obviously a Riot knife and it's very nice. It's very, very nicely made and the quality is absolutely there, but there's not enough going on here. The, the value to me, Oftentimes it's like, what are you doing with the materials, right? What did you do with the materials to ultimately turn them into this knife? And this was obviously meant as a more aesthetically simple, the lines make this thing unique, but as far as the construction and how everything comes together, it's a pretty simple aesthetic. There's not enough complication going on here. While it does look cool, there's not enough going on here to justify this as a $400 knife. I mean, even when comparing with other knives in Riyadh's own line. It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, here, I'm gonna give you an example of something. Whoa, hang on. I'm gonna give you an example of another Riyadh knife that has essentially the same level of detail going on, right? People are gonna immediately go, that's full titanium, full titanium, it's automatically more, stop. <laughs> stop. Um, both of these knives, this is the Chavez 229 Redemption. I would say it's a fairly simple aesthetic. There's not an insane amount of stuff going on here. This is about a $350 knife, right? Now inflation, that's gonna increase things, but I would say arguably if, if one of these was slightly more complicated, right? I mean, I understand this is a line of lock. I would say because of the grind and the clip, there's probably more milling in the 229 than there is this guy, right? And while M390 is not that much more expensive to purchase from Bowler versus RWL, whoever makes RWL, I have no idea. Um, it does cost a little bit more, but the 229 Redemption is $350. I'm sorry, <laughs> I almost said $350 less. It's $50 less. This knife feels, um, if I was to put an exact pinpoint price on it, I would say it feels about $325 maybe 350. I don't understand why it's 400. Now that's hardly the most offensive thing that I have seen in the last couple of years, right? And again, it's kind of silly to complain about it because it's gone, right? <laughs> like it's it's not there anymore. It's not like I can stop people from buying it. Um, and I honestly wouldn't because I, I this is what I'd honestly say. I mean, you can't get this, right? I don't get to keep this knife. I have nothing worked out with the retailer that this was an exclusive through, right? So I have no incentive to say this. I like this design. Personally, I probably, if this was available, it was like, hey, you can buy this right now. I would have gone, that's too much money. Add to cart. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. We've all done that, right? This is cool. I like this knife. It's not a recommendable. Like for those of you going to hunt it down on the secondary market, I guess be prepared to pay more money than what they went for. You have to really like it. If you can snag one of these for 400 or less and you really like how it looks, you'll probably be really happy uh, about it. But as far as like the stuff that I regularly recommend on this channel, I don't think the price is very good. And I definitely don't think that the design is super ergonomic or utilitarian in any way. This is an enthusiast knife. And I think it was designed that way. I don't think that the, the person who designed it was like, oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to make the ultimate perfect cutting tool. No, it's, this is, this is for knife people, right? It's cool. I don't know that there's anything else I can say. The reason that this went on for 30 minutes is because these types of knives make me feel very strongly. Strongly, more strongly, more strongly? I don't know if that's it. I'm more compelled to make a longer video than even my usual 20 minute reviews, right? It's cool. I also had a great experience with um, the retailer that these are through. So make sure you check them out in the description. So.
please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.